Hey there, back again for more? Great, let's start with a question this time. Ever found yourself obsessively thinking about someone, wondering why they seem to be living rent-free in your head? Maybe it's someone you just met or someone you've known for years, but for some reason, you can't stop replaying conversations, stalking their social media, or imagining what-if scenarios. It almost feels like magic, like the universe decided to drop this person into your life and now your brain is fixated on them. But guess what? It's not magic, it's science. Welcome back to Psych Bites. Also, if you are interested in engaging with us, here's a great start. Have you ever had a crush on someone and couldn't figure out why they had such a hold on your mind? Was it their laugh, their eyes, or just that unexplainable spark? Drop your thoughts in the comments. I'd love to hear what made your past or current crush so irresistible. Let's talk attraction. So, let's begin. See, attraction isn't some mysterious force of fate. It's actually a complex cocktail of brain chemistry, psychology, and even evolutionary biology. Your brain isn't just randomly picking someone to obsess over. It's actually following a series of wired-in processes that have been shaping human attraction for thousands of years. So, if you've ever wondered why you're drawn to someone, the answer isn't just because they're hot. Although, let's be real, that helps. It's a mix of hormones, past experiences, and subconscious factors that your brain is working through without you even realizing it. Let's break it down. At the very foundation of attraction, your body kicks things off before your mind even has a say in it. The first player in the game, lust. It's the initial drive that pushes you to seek out a potential partner, and it's purely biological. Your brain releases testosterone and estrogen, hormones that basically whisper to you, go find someone. This isn't the deep, poetic kind of attraction. This is primal desire. The reason why sometimes you find yourself suddenly noticing someone's jawline or the way they walk before you even know a single thing about them. It's instinct, plain and simple. But then comes the real roller coaster, attraction. This is where things get intense. Attraction is where you start daydreaming, overanalyzing texts, and feeling that rush of excitement every time you see their name pop up on your phone. This stage is all about dopamine, the brain's feel-good chemical, which gives you that high every time you interact with them. Ever felt your heartbeat race when you see your crush? That's norepinephrine kicking in, making you feel alert, energized, and slightly anxious, almost like you just chugged an espresso. And while all of this is happening, there's a weird little trick your brain pulls on you. It actually lowers serotonin levels. Now, serotonin is responsible for keeping your thoughts in check, helping you feel stable and in control. But when it drops, boom. Obsession. This is why crushes take over your thoughts, why you replay conversations in your head, why you feel like you can't focus on anything else. Your brain is literally wired to make you fixate on them. And this is where things get really interesting because lust and attraction don't always lead to attachment. In fact, your brain runs these as separate systems, which means you can lust after one person, feel emotionally attached to another, and be physically attracted to yet another, all at the same time. Messy, right? But what exactly makes you drawn to one person over another? Why do some people instantly grab your attention, while others, who might be just as attractive, don't even make a dent in your thoughts? Well, part of it has to do with something called the mere exposure effect. Your brain loves familiarity. The more you see someone, the more attractive they start to seem. Ever noticed how someone becomes cuter over time just by being around them more? That's your brain slowly warming up to their presence, making them feel safe, familiar, and desirable. But it's not just about physical familiarity. It's also about emotional familiarity. This is where things get a little uncomfortable because your brain tends to gravitate toward people who remind you, on some level, of your parents. Not necessarily in how they look, but in their behavior, emotional responses, and the way they make you feel. If you grew up with a parent who is affectionate and reassuring, you might find yourself drawn to people who offer warmth and security. If you had a parent who was distant or emotionally unavailable, 
You might find yourself attracted to partners who play hot and cold, not because it's what you want, but because on a deep subconscious level, it's what feels familiar. And then, of course, there's biology. Your brain isn't just picking a crush at random. It's actually scanning for subtle genetic indicators of compatibility. Studies show that people are naturally drawn to facial symmetry, clear skin, and other physical traits associated with good health. It's not something we consciously think about, but it's happening in the background, a built-in evolutionary mechanism to ensure strong, healthy offspring. But here's where it gets tricky. Biology doesn't always win. Sometimes attraction is completely unpredictable. This is where the X factor comes in, that one unexplainable thing that makes you drawn to someone even when they don't fit the mold. It's why you see people in relationships that don't seem to make sense on paper. Why some of the most iconic couples in history weren't matched by looks or status, but by something deeper. Think Marilyn Monroe and Arthur Miller, an unlikely pair, yet undeniably drawn to each other. Because at the end of the day, attraction isn't just biological, it's also deeply personal. Sometimes it's a shared sense of humor. Sometimes it's the way they make you feel seen. Sometimes it's just a weird spark that doesn't fit into any logical category but it's there. And while initial attraction might start with looks, proximity, and chemistry, what really keeps someone in your life long-term isn't just lust or excitement, it's attachment. Attachment is what separates a crush from something real. This is where oxytocin and vasopressin come into play, two powerful chemicals that bond you to another person over time. The more you spend time together, share experiences, and build trust, the deeper the attachment becomes. And what's crazy is that attraction itself can evolve over time. Someone who seemed just okay at first can become the most magnetic person in the world once you connect with them emotionally. So while your brain might kickstart attraction, what keeps someone in your life has more to do with who they are, how they treat you, and how you grow together over time. So the next time you find yourself obsessing over a crush, wondering why them, why now, just know, it's not random. It's your brain, your history, your biology, and your emotions all working together to create this overwhelming pull towards someone. And while attraction might feel instant, true connection isn't just about chemistry, it's about what happens next. But speaking of chemistry, have you ever wondered how much of your pleasure is actually controlled by your mind? If you think orgasms are purely physical, you might be surprised to learn just how much your brain controls your experience of pleasure. From psychological barriers to the hidden science of arousal, there's way more going on beneath the surface than you think. Curious? Check out our video on four psychological secrets of orgasm, because when it comes to pleasure, your brain is running the show. Click to watch now, and don't forget to subscribe to Psych Bites for more deep dives into psychology, relationships, and human behavior. See you in the next one.